Mercedes ditching of the zero side pod concept has appeared to be the catalyst for improvement that many fans thought it would be. They haven't actually shot up the grid ahead of Fernando Alonso or battling Max Verstappen, but the drivers do seem happy with the car. What they have done is secure themselves as the third fastest, but it will have come at great cost. Questions of their expenditure are rightly being asked, but Mercedes are apparently plowing ahead with more upgrades anyway. Is a loophole they're abusing about to be slammed shut, leaving them stranded and budgetless for the rest of the season? And while the expenditure of the top teams is under greater scrutiny, could the smaller teams be in for a budget boon? Stick around as we cover all of that in today's video. Mercedes Monaco upgrade saw the end of the zero pod concept that had become the focus of fans' anguish for a year and a half. An excellent double podium in Spain may have been misleading. That result had a lot to do with the specifics of the track and some shock results in qualifying. Nonetheless, the car is clearly improved. Lewis Hamilton no longer sounds like a teenager being dragged around a museum asking when he can leave. Toto Wolff hasn't threatened to write another apology letter. And George Russell? Well, he's actually just doing the same stuff he was before, in that annoyingly positive and polite way of his. Mercedes are moving forward, though. A big part of the change to the side pods was unlocking more development paths for the team. The parts brought to Monaco will have been very expensive to research, design, and manufacture due to how extensive they were. Since then, Mercedes have continued bringing small changes, but as the championship heads back to Europe, bigger upgrades are expected. After the Canadian Grand Prix, team boss Toto Wolf said of the upgrades to the car, We're bringing a larger one to Silverstone. Then we should have another one before shutdown. It's just that the learnings have accelerated a lot since we changed some of the concept architecture, and there should be decent steps coming in the next four races. The days of the big F1 teams throwing endless amounts of money at their problems until they go away are over thanks to F1's cost cap era, or at least we think they are. So a change as radical as the one we saw from Mercedes in Monte Carlo did have some quarters suggesting that there would be no scope for further upgrades later down the line this year. We know that isn't the case, though, as they already have more big upgrades coming. But while news about Mercedes' continued upgrades are met with questions about their spending power, the Silver Arrows boss has said everything is under control and the team won't fall foul of the financial regulations, like their arch-rivals did during the 2022 season. We've set up a huge organization in our financial department of 46 people that monitors the cost cap down to the last screw, Wolf confirmed. It follows the trend of spending during all of the year, and what we've done is basically allocated resources to various projects. We stayed below that line all year last year, and we've stayed below that line this year. Considering a normal development switch for the next year, this is still pretty much on track. The good thing is that we're constantly learning about what the car is doing. There are going to be some fundamental design changes for next year, but it's not that we're building stuff. It's more what we are simulating, and that is not measured in money, it's teraflops or wind tunnel hours. This confirmation from Wolf will not only be music to the ears of those fans desperate to see Red Bull knocked off their perch, but also a positive sign for Lewis Hamilton, as he looks for reassurances ahead of putting pen to paper on a new Mercedes contract. But time in the wind tunnel and simulation still cost money. Sure, it isn't anything near as much as physical parts, but Toto has already confirmed that there are more big upgrades coming, which means more big physical parts, which means more money spent on raw materials and factory time, which do cost a lot of money. Since the new regulations came in, commentators on the sport have been saying that loopholes would be found and the teams would be able to spend what they want anyway. One specific loophole that's been blatantly abused by some teams for a long time, most obviously by Mercedes, is the use of subsidiary companies to do research through and to take on staff wages. James Allison had been shipped off to Mercedes' yachting team, pun intended, before we came back to the team full-time. As part of what sources have suggested is a ramped-up effort by the FIA to ensure compliance with the cost cap rules, it's now stepped in regarding the use of special project divisions outside of F1 teams. It has been common for F1 teams to employ senior technical staff to work in separate divisions on technical projects to exploit knowledge gained in Grand Prix racing and sell it to the wider business world, like with James Allison. As examples, Red Bull has its advanced technology division, McLaren has applied technologies, Mercedes has applied science, and Aston Martin has performance technologies. These have all been successful and worked on multiple projects involving road cars, America's Cup yachts, bicycles, and other designs. 
But in the wake of suspicions, which are 100% correct by the way, that some were perhaps gaming the system and using these divisions to further F1 knowledge on the side, outside of the cost cap, before passing that information back to their teams free of charge, the FIA has stepped in. In a technical directive that was originally drafted earlier this year, but has recently been revised and put into force, the FIA has made it clear to teams that they will not be allowed to transfer any intellectual property from projects running outside of their F1 operations back into the squad without that work falling under the cost cap. TD45, as it is known, states that while teams remain free to run these special project divisions, any IP from them that is used by F1 teams must be accounted for under the cost cap, so cannot come from free sources within the same company. F1 knowledge can still be freely passed out to the technical divisions, so can continue to be utilized in outside business interests. At this point, you should be asking, how the hell would the FIA know though? When teams submit new parts to be added to their car, they have to show how they came up with the idea and design the parts being added. The FIA will now be looking more closely at the root of these ideas and concepts. I have zero doubt that some clever mechanics will come up with a way to cover their tracks, reducing the cost of the ideas that have been created, but hopefully they will still be paying something for them. Nothing should ever come free in Formula 1. The teams are currently all claiming that they already fully complied with the regulations, which we know isn't true. However, one leading F1 source with good knowledge of the situation said that TD45 has already triggered changes. It had an impact, said the insider. Some have been forced to act because they realized what they were doing is no longer allowed. But the difficult part is that they will have been doing it since January 1st, when the TD declared a cutoff point, so they will have had a spend up until this point that they now need to address and somehow claw back. The arrival of TD45 comes against the backdrop of what several sources have said is a much more thorough effort by the FIA to investigate team spending this year as part of its cost cap analysis. It is understood that the governing body has been visiting team factories in recent weeks for forensic analysis of their finances, with one suggesting that the latest questionnaire from the governing body regarding compliance now totals more than 100 questions, far higher than 12 months ago. So while the top teams are busy hiding their tracks and covering up their questionable lack of expenditure, why are the smaller teams such as Williams and Alfa Romeo asking for more money to spend? Why not just do what the bigger teams are doing and cover their tracks? Well, those smaller teams are looking to completely overhaul their factories and infrastructure, something that can't be explained away as divine inspiration. The FIA might be gullible at times, but no one's going to believe Williams just found a brand new factory somewhere. Before the Canadian GP, Williams boss James Vowles admitted the once great team is now 20 years behind the top teams in terms of key infrastructure at the factory. But he says the budget cap is now allowing Williams to catch up now that it can afford it. The numbers we're talking about here is hundreds of millions, not 10 million or 20 million, but hundreds of millions to sort of catch up with the level of investment, said Vowles. What we're looking for at the moment is the ability to have sporting equity, the ability to have infrastructure that matches our peers. Another team very keen on rule changes is Sauber, currently known as Alfa Romeo and soon to be Audi. The important difference is no longer the budget that each team has, team representative Alessandro Aluni Bravi said. It's the infrastructure. The top teams have been investing without any limit in the previous 20 years, so that the cutting-edge technology and facilities are not comparable to the rest of the teams, he added. If the FIA does allow some special investments for F1's non-top teams, Bravi thinks it'll be possible for up to six or seven teams to be fighting at the top. Do you think Mercedes or anyone else will get caught out by the new technical directive that closes the loophole allowing the teams to bring in technology for free? And what do you think of the smaller team's request for allowances to update their infrastructure? Let us know what you think in the comments down below, and until next time, drive safe and bye for now.